Thank you everybody for coming. Um, uh, my name is Brian Skin. I'm a PhD chemical engineer by day. I dabble in Python on the side and do use it a little bit at work. Um, so I've been programming since forever. Uh, TI calculator in high school and um, ended up doing some, a lot of VBA work for an internship in college. And so that was actually my first, the first language I got deeply into. And then got to a point where I was trying to build something object oriented with VBA and it really was terrible. Um, and so in 2014, I picked up Python and have never looked back. Um, so the talk I'm going to give this afternoon, the riddle of, of the intersphinx, uh, talking about the uh, documentation system sphinx and the intersphinx extension for it. Uh, in particular, how to configure it and how to compose uh, cross references in it uh, in a way that uh, that that that, uh, that works. Because uh, when I first tried to use it, it did not. Um, so I'm here for the, the remainder of the conference, but uh, uh, during and afterwards, I'm on Twitter, uh, GitHub, uh, Stack, Stack Exchange, uh, some mostly on the, the chemistry site, actually. And I have a blog uh, on GitHub pages. And I will have uh, these slides up uh, for anyone to take a look at uh, whenever you like at this uh, bit.ly link. So. so what am I talking about? Um, I'm ultimately talking about documentation, generally, um, but I'm going to drill down and specifically talk about Sphinx, the, uh, the documentation generator system of Sphinx, and then specifically, specifically uh, about the nuts and bolts of writing cross-references in Sphinx to uh, artifacts uh, in, in code specifically, but this is relevant to other documentation artifacts like the pages themselves and bookmarks within the pages um, because while it's actually fairly straightforward to do, if you don't know what information you're looking for and where to find it, it can be quite frustrating uh, to write them correctly. Uh, so a lot, of the, a lot of the other talks here have been fairly high level, uh, uh, you know, mile high views or overviews of things. This is going to be a very uh, drilled in nuts and bolts uh, talk about how to do uh, these cross references. So for anyone who's not familiar, uh, what is Sphinx? Sphinx is, is open source. Uh, it generates static documentation from restructured text source. Uh, the restructured text uh, markup language was actually uh, is, a, is a revised version of a language called structured text, uh, specifically, specifically created for the Sphinx documentation generator. Um, Sphinx was originally built for the official Python docs, but now is, is used heavily across uh, the entirety of the Py Python ecosystem. Um, I don't really want to mess with that. Um, it, it's, it's, it's under active development currently. Um, there are, there's a team of people who are continuing to make it better. Uh, it's in version two now, and uh, they have a, a, a branch for version three, so active, actively developed. Um, a lot of projects host on a site called Read the Docs, but you can, it's a static, static HTML, J, uh, JavaScript, you can host it anywhere. You can build to HTML or PDF or EPUB, a number of formats, but HTML is, is in my experience, by far the most common. Um, of particular relevance to this talk is the ability to document code artifacts, uh, modules, classes, functions, et cetera, and also to insert references to those artifacts, both in the documentation you're building and in the documentation of other projects. So that instead of, you, you can insert a hyperlink to the Python docs, to string.format in the Python docs. But depending on how you format that, or another project where there's, it's actively changing, you would then have to go and curate those links manually every time they changed. And um, Sphinx provides a mechanism where you don't have to do that. Um, so this is an example of a Sphinx documentation page. This is one of my projects. Um, in, in retrospect, I, uh, I knew when I created the name that I was probably going to regret it someday. Um, the name of the project is Svabjinv. So it actually, this will, this will show up later in the talk. It's an intuitive name, just not a very, uh, it's a kind of entertaining one to pronounce. Um, but it's got text. Uh, this is documenting do uh, a class in the project called Inventory. And in particular, uh, of relevance to, to what I'm going to talk about, um, if I hover the mouse pointer over that reference to, that's, an, that's actually a reference within inventory's docs to itself, um, it's an active link. So if I click on that, then it would actually go back to the same page. But if I have a, a, a link like that 
elsewhere in my documentation, it'll hop straight to this documentation uh, for inventory. And it has a, a handy tool tip that shows um, where in the project the, uh, the, the, the link is going to. So InterSphinx, uh, I'll explain you know, much more about this in a little bit. Um, InterSphinx allows you to do that same thing, but instead of uh, creating a, a cross-reference to an object or an artifact in the documentation you're building, it lets you reference objects or artifacts in other documentation sets. So in this case, um, this is again the same page, but here I have a cross-reference to uh, the Python built-in STR, and as you can see in the tooltip, it tells you this is not local to this project, this is actually in uh, Python 3.7. So I'm gonna divert a little bit. Um, this is uh, the, this, this riddle of the Sphinx, some of you probably heard of it. It's only about 4,000 years old, but just in case, I'm gonna make a spoiler warning because I'm gonna give away the answer. Um, question, what is the creature that walks on four legs in the morning, two legs at noon, and three in the evening? Answer, a human. Babies walk on four, adult on two, and then you need a little help uh, as, as one gets, gets older sometimes. So, what is the riddle of the intersphinx? So this is a terrible joke, not like a groaner, it's just a bad joke, but it, uh, there's a point to it. What starts with three, continues with two, and ends with four? The answer, what the heck? And this is what I would say most times when I tried to create a cross-reference to another project, because you can break your references if you don't format them correctly. And so a working reference, like I showed, you have the object and you have the tooltip and you have a link and it, it all works very nicely. But, hi. Mm -hmm. um, if you do it wrong, it looks like it's supposed to. You have that nice, that nice uh, reference formatting there, but it's just text. There's no link, there's no tooltip. It's just markup, basically. And, by default, when you build it, Sphinx doesn't tell you that you've, you've constructed these incorrectly. You have to, when you, when you make, this is a, the, Linux, uh, the Linux make command. Um, I'm not stepping on it, am I? Um, Windows is similar. You can pass it the nitpicky option, the dash n, and then it'll tell you, oh, warning, you, you had this cross-reference cross in here, but, but, but I couldn't find it. Um, and so, numpy nd array, string.format, inventory.count, that last one is one from, from this Svabgen project. Um, all of these cross-references I've intentionally misconfigured to, get to, to, to reveal these errors, but it doesn't tell you how you've gotten it wrong, because Sphinx doesn't know. It, 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 it is not able to tell you um, how to fix it. So uh, in, in the remainder of the talk, I, I'm gonna go through um, what I see is the three key tasks to um, getting these cross-references cross in place uh, in uh, really what is a, an easy way once you know uh, what you're trying, you know, what you're looking for and how to find it. Um, you have to get Inter InterSphinx installed and configured. You have to find the documentation that you're looking for, the information about the artifact you're trying to cross-reference, and then you just need to write the cross-reference. Um, and for the purposes of exposition, it actually is clearest, I think, to discuss these in reverse order. So that's what I'm gonna do. Um, so constructing cross-references, you really have to understand the, uh, the Sphinx namespace model for how it uh, documents the artifacts that it's, or how, how it uh, bookkeeps, excuse me, the, the uh, objects or artifacts that it's documenting. So for any given project, uh, marked by the, the, the outer box there, you can have multiple domains that uh, in most cases correspond to the programming languages that are uh, relevant to the project. So in this example project, say there's some, some Python and some C++, probably C would be more relevant for like a C extension, but that's just what I picked. And then within each, uh, within each domain, you have what are called roles. And so for Python, you have classes and methods shown here, then you have attributes and data and several others. For C++, you have class and struct, I believe. Uh, there's also a standard one that is kind of intrinsic to restructured te text that has things like the, um, the book, you can, you can create bookmarks effectively in Sphinx, and so uh, just general bookmarks within the text, those are in the standard uh, domain. And then each of these roles has the artifacts in it that you have documented and included in the documentation. 
And then uh, when you bring interesting into the picture, then you can have multiple projects, and each of them have uh, domains, roles, and artifacts all documented in their individual sets of documentation. And so these, this is the structure that the cross-references uh, are, are written out of. And um, anyone familiar with restructured text will recognize, it, recognize this immediately. Uh, for anyone unfamiliar, the, the, uh, the, the, colon, the colon syntax is, is fairly standard for telling uh, restructured text that you, if you're trying to tell it to do something. And then the, the, the back ticks are a common feature for uh, enclosing arguments to, uh, to those directives. And so the, the, the syntax of an artifact cross-reference and uh, really um, restructured text cross-references in general, um, but in particular for these objects, you have the domain shown in blue, uh, the role in green, and then you specify the particular project that you're referring to. Uh, there it's in black, and then the artifact name. And so as an example, for the string class in Python, you would refer to Python pi domain, class role, the Python project, and str as your artifact. And there are some, some defaults that it lets you use if, uh, uh, if you're in certain circumstances, which can make the, 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 the markup more concise. Um, if you have a unique artifact, then you don't need to specify the project. Uh, one case where this can fail is something like Max, where it exists in both NumPy and Python. Um, it may actually not collide, but if you have that sort of situation, then you, you have to specify which one that you're trying to reach. And then uh, Sphinx is configured. Uh, with what, what it calls the default domain, which is in turn by default the pi domain. Uh, and so uh, in this case, all I would need to do to refer to the, the string class is just class str. Um, and so that's where that syntax for these cross-references come from, comes from. Now, what to do about, you know, these are broken, how are they broken? How do I figure out how they are broken and what they should look like? Um, Sphinx, when it, uh, when it, when it builds a, uh, an HTML documentation set you know, for a project, you've got the project, its domains, its roles, its artifacts, and in addition to building the website, you know, the, the, the documentation website itself, it also uh, dumps all of the information it has about the, uh, uh, the artifacts that it's documenting into a file called objects.inv. And so this is where the awkward name for my project comes in, Sphinx Objects Inventory Svabjinf. So it made sense at the time. It's intuitive. I just wasn't, I was, I, you know, past me was not kind to now me in terms of giving talks. Um, okay, so with, you know, anytime you have an HTML build, you have an objects.inv. Um, where is it? How do you find it? How do you, how do you track it down? so that you can inspect it and get the information out of it that you need. Well, by default, um, ooh, that's cool. That arrow doesn't look like that on Windows. Ah, eh, it works. Um, by default, the, the objects.inv is dropped into the root folder of the generated documentation. Um, for local builds, that's usually something like doc build HTML, objects.inv, but for another project you're trying to document, where's the root folder? It's not always obvious, it depends on the project, it just depends on exactly how the built documentation is pushed to uh, the place on the web where it lives. Um, these are just some examples, and as you can see, sometimes it's at the root of the URL, uh, or the, the UL tree, like for matplotlib, and it just varies. Um, and most of the time, the objects that INV will be at that root. So for matplotlib, it's just at the root objects that INV. However, um, it's just a file, it's static docs, so those, they can be pushed to the final destination in whatever fashion the developers or, or documentarians choose. And, um, you know, so it could be someplace else. But in general, the, the, only, um, the only documentation set I've encountered so far uh, that doesn't have it in the standard location is Django. And so instead of objects.inv, it's just, a, I think it's, a, it's an endpoint, uh, underscore objects, which Django, great, product, great project, they do great things, but I'm sorry, what? <laughs> Why? Why was that necessary? Um, so once you know where the documentation you're looking for lives on the web, you can start trying to find the objects at IMV. Um, ignore the lower part. This will, the, the lower part of this will, will show up on a later slide. Um, but the, one, of the, one of the things that I've implemented in Svabgenv uh, for this step, um, if you pass 
um, you know, it has a suggest mode where it's, it, you know, you tell it, in this case, find axes, uh, fuzzy match objects that look like axes in this objects inventory. And then you, the, the, the U argument there, um, the U flag tells, tells it that uh, what I've provided it is a URL. And it will actually go out to that URL and walk down it uh, until it finds one that has objects.inv at that level. And so you don't have to really look that hard. You just go to a web page in the documentation set, copy, paste, and it'll find it for you. And this is what it looks like. Well, that, that, that's, that's, that's easy to read, right? That's, that's wait, no. Um, so it's actually four lines of header, plain text header. Uh, the first and fourth lines are boilerplate. Second one tells you the project. Third you t tells you the version. And these are um, generated from the, co the configuration file for Sphinx when, uh, when, it, when it builds the documentation. And like the fourth line says, the, the rest of the content is Zlib compressed. And so this confounded me at first. I finally found my objects at INV, but okay, I can't read it. So I, I, I looked at the Sphinx docs and, and, and uh, basically reverse engineered their, uh, their compression step. Um, but um, in, the, in the interim, it turned out uh, that, that I didn't know it at the time because I started uh, this Stavgen project in 2016, but it turns out the InterSphinx extension itself can be executed as a module and it will actually take that inventory file and dump it in a structured way. You can't slice it, you can't you know, select within it, it just gives you everything, which for Django, I think this was you know, several thousand lines. Um, but it, it's got all the components in there. It's got uh, the domains, the, 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 the roles, the artifacts, and then the, the, the relative URLs of um, each artifact at where it lives uh, in the documentation. And so just picking one out of there, the module django.apps, um, if you go to that root, root URL, Django project, et cetera, 2.2, and then tag the, uh, the relative URL, URL onto it, it goes to django.apps. So that is the information that Sphinx is using internally to know where to create the cross-reference. I just, I, I, I point that out just for information mainly. Um, what you really care about is the domain, the role, and the artifact name. And then as well, the purple line there, uh, the, the root uh, the root URL of the documentation, which I mentioned earlier. So another way of, of getting to that data in a, in a different view, uh, Sobgen has a convert function, which will take the entire inventory <coughs> and uh, decode it effectively. De uh, uh, Zlib decompress uh, the, the object information, and it's just a different, a different view of the same stuff. It's not broken. It, this is the, just the, literally the order that's, that Sphinx encoded the, f the objects, in the, uh, the artifacts, into the inventory. Um, so again, you have the artifact name, domain, role. The digit is an internal flag for how it handles these objects in search. Um, again, you have the relative URL. They did something very clever. The dollar sign there is a shorthand that says swap in the artifact name into the URL. And then the hyphen here, this is, this is uh, what it displays by default when it creates the cross-reference. And that's also a shorthand that says just use the artifact name. And this apparently, uh, decreased the inventory file sizes by like 80% or something. Just get all the extra characters out of there. Um, so this is, anyway, this is another way of getting the entirety of the, the content within the inventory. And then this is the same, same view that I showed earlier that I said don't worry about that bottom part. The, uh, the suggest mode of, of Svabjinv will give you, uh, on, again, he's this fuzzy wuzzy, it's uh, pip installable. Um, search on a keyword that you're looking for and it'll tell you uh, just the objects or artifacts that it finds that fuzzy match uh, that search term within a certain, uh, above a certain score. And so this really lets you drill down and say, all right, it's probably gonna be in this list. Uh, okay, there we go. That's the, uh, um, that's what I want. And this actually gives you um, almost, it's not exactly, uh, the, the, there's, a, there's a fine detail, but it gives you the information you need on domain role and artifact name to craft the cross-reference. So, with this information, I was able to fix my you know, fictitiously broken references. Func doesn't work because numpy, ND array is actually a class, not a function. Uh, String.format format is a, a method, not a data attribute of a module. And the problem here, uh, this uh, 
uh, inventory uh, class in, uh, in Sobgen, that, that was actually correct. However, Sphinx was looking for it at the fully qualified uh, module uh, class uh, name. So I had to include the whole chain in there in order for Sphinx to find it. Uh, and then just as a reference, uh, some of the key roles for documenting uh, code objects, in, in, uh, code artifacts in the Pi domain, uh, mod for modules, data is a root uh, module level variable, uh, func class, attribute for an attribute on a class, uh, in, in contrast to data at the, the module level, and then method for a, a method within a class. So again, this is in the slides. If you need to refer back to it, it's there. So now all that remains, and this is actually you know, item one on the list, is to configure InterSphinx correctly. And um, they're really, they're, uh, the, the conf.py is the configuration file for Sphinx. Uh, it shows up in the source directory typically. Um, and there are, are, are two, it's simply a Python file. There are two uh, configuration uh, items that you have to set. One is to add uh, sphinx.ext.intersphinx as an item in the extensions list. And then you have to uh, configure your intersphinx mapping, which that is, uh, this is where the information goes to tell Sphinx and or intersphinx where to look on either on the web or locally to, to find the base of the documentation you're trying to refer to, the base URL and the location of the object's inventory at that location. And so um, intersphinx mapping is a dict. It's mapping user-defined project names. You can choose anything you want for those project names. So um, if I wanted to call Python, the Python docs in my project snake or pi or foo or whatever, it doesn't have to be Python. This is, this is the choice of, of whoever's writing the, doc, the given documentation set that's referring out, uh, in this case, to the Python docs. So um, the first, uh, the, the, so this is a mapping of, of strings to two tuples. Um, the first element of the tuple is the base URL of the documentation set. So if you're, you know, every, everything that you're going to reference on the Python docs at 3.7 is going to be a relative URL tacked onto that base. Um, and then the, 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 the nun there as the second element of the tuple is a special argument to Sphinx that says just look for objects.inv at that root, which is where it is for Python. So again, so Django is a good example for a different value uh, going to that, that second element of the tuple because it, what? Um, and then you can also have, if you, if you want to fall back, so like um, if you sometimes build your docs in a situation where you don't have network access, you would keep a local copy of the object file and then have that second element uh, be a list or a tuple, I think they both work, and it'll walk through them trying each one until it succeeds. Um, but I, I, I rarely do that. It's, you, most of them are just web and none. So, those are the three key tasks. Um, you need to configure your inner sphinx, uh, getting what needs to be there into uh, the comp.py. Um, that involves some searching to find the URLs and objects inventory locations on the remote uh, documentation sets. You then need to search your objects inventory uh, for the, uh, the information on the artifacts that you are trying to document, and then you write your cross-references with that information. And that's all there is to it. So, um, not going to go on. This is just uh, attributions for the various images that I used and other things. Um, yeah, I'm around. I am always open to talk about anything I'm working on or you're working on or uh, help you know, crafting cross references. Anything you like, look me up. Give me a ping. Thank you very much. <laughs>